It's on? Yeah. Oh. Hey, uh, good morning. We're glad you're here with us this morning. Um, my name is Rich, and um, we're glad you're here. I'm going to read to you something um, this morning. I'm going to read to you out of uh, Psalm 77, 1 through 6, and then 11 through 15. And then we're going to have the praise team come together. And, um... Go. Huh? Just, just oh. Wait. Okay. Can you hear me? No, we're good. We, we need you to hear something. We need you to hear something. Um. Eric, this is a really bad time to go. Out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. 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 Oh. So you're going to say, welcome to church. And then Eric is coming. Really? <laughs> you know, you plan this stuff. Well, you can just keep that on, right? Katie, Katie can, edit, can, you right? Cut, can you cut, edit can, it? Can you edit? She can edit. Okay. Good to be back. Um, good to be back. Um, so I want to introduce someone to you real quick here. If you can all look in the back there. Ebenezer and Lauren. Ebenezer, no, you guys. We're talking to you. Raise, raise your hands. And um, Ebenezer and Lauren. Um, Ebenezer is the new pastor at Spencerville Church. And he starts in a couple weeks. I think you said the 26th. So they, they're just stopping in today. And it's good to have you. Good to have you here. And uh, I asked him to help me with communion at the end, and I asked him if he was on the clock, but uh, you're always on the clock, right? Ebenezer? All right. So uh, we're going to start off this morning. I'm going to read to you. Katie's got it. Psalm 76, 1 to 6, and then 11 15, and the beginning of 1 to 6, just to want to let you know, he's like, ah! And then 11 to 15, he's like, but I can't. Hang on to God. The things he's done for me in the past. So let me read this to you this morning. Psalm 77, 1 to 6. I cried out to God for help. I cried out to God to hear me. When I was in distress, I sought the Lord. And now I stretch out untiring hands, and I would not be comforted. I remembered you, God, and I groaned. I meditated, and my spirit grew faint. You kept my eyes from closing. I was too troubled to speak. I thought about the former days, the years of long ago. I remember my songs in the night. I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your miracles of long ago. I will consider all your works and meditate on all your mighty deeds. Your ways, God, are holy. What God is as great, what God, what God is as great as our God. 
You are the God who performs miracles. You display your power among the peoples. With your mighty arm, you redeemed your people, the descendants of Jacob and Joseph. So this morning, wherever you're at, what's on your heart and what's your mind, there's times to truly scream out. And in the reality, remember what God's brought you through. And even today, to take a look at how God has redeemed you. Amen. So let's take a moment and pray, and then we're going to get rolling here. Uh, Jesus, uh, we thank you for the body of Christ. We thank you that you are a God that hears us and lis listens to us in our moaning, in our honest feelings of what's going on. And Lord, help us today to look towards you and remind ourselves of what you have brought us through. And Lord, that you have redeemed us out of love and grace, that we can be in relationship with you. And we ask this in Christ's name, amen.
train and I was staring at the time I know it's gonna put my feet in the cold cup Check out the fashion, I ain't gonna know what I see It's no mystery Whatever happens to a passion I can live for We'll be made for the baby, 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 boy And when did I forget That I was gonna love you, my baby, 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 my baby
No, I just wanted to give you the news uh, and say I think everyone here. I blocked the video of you playing at least the first two songs. I wrote back and just my bad. So, Katie, can you edit that? No. Okay. Sorry about that. I looked around at this blue shirt. So, hey, uh, real quick, want to uh, connect with you guys today with uh, just a couple announcements. Oh, you can do it if you want. I mean, I, mean, I can do it. Um, just real quick, we just want to. Um, this is kind of a something like you'll see a lot during the year, just kind of the new year, September through the summer, I guess you could call it. You know, the, something you know, like the cross before me and the world behind me. That's, that's to die to the things of, of self and to die to the things of God's kingdom. So I uh, just wanted to, you'll see that kind of slide here and there throughout the year. And then um, Mom, Mid-County United Medis Ministries, we um, give food to that. You can drop it off in front of the office. Bring it in Sundays. Um, Larry White's coming next Thursday to pick it up. But here's the thing. Um, it was communicated to me that Larry is unable to probably come pick it up because he's moving to Mississippi. So it'd be really hard for him to do. And um, what we need is someone um, from the church, when we get that down every second Thursday, usually we do it, to be able to pick it up and take it to the office, which is in Wheaton. So um, think about that. If you could be that individual that um, takes on that role in the life of the church. It, it, and this food goes to our area code as well as the surrounding areas. So we just wanted to uh, let you know about that. There's still another week until he comes by for the last time on his own. And then also we'll be, Angie's gonna talk about this in a second. We, we're kicking off Sunday school and, and nursery up to fifth grade. And um, that will be discussed in a second or two. And then also, um, and there's uh, some policy stuff to go over, and there's some of that on the Welcome Center as well. And then Revelation Bible Study is still moving on, and Steve Chan, he is knowledgeable, right? Well, and I say that in humility, for you are knowledgeable. And Stephen Sear is very knowledgeable as well. And when they both get together, but they're, no, they bring it down to people like mine level. And there, there's about five more weeks of Revelation, and you can contact um, Angie about that to get in on the Zoom, as well as we've been, we're probably gonna, again, I don't know the times, I could change that again. But what we want is really everyone in a small group to connect. And there's this thing called Discovery Bible Study that's real basic and real easy. You get together, and what I'm gonna ask you to do is if you're not in a small group and you, and you can, you know, make it a priority. It's just to email me. We're going to see when that would start. And um, that will start, it could be in a week or two, we're not sure. But we want everyone in a small group um, to connect with each other. And it's going to be Zoom for now. And uh, we know that life isn't back to normal and it probably won't be for a while. So we want to connect with each other. It's really important. And I think that's all I have. Oh, another thing too. Um, the Free Methodist Bishop Relief Crisis Fund you, you saw this and you can um, send through the internet, obviously, click on it and give. They give to um, Hurricane Ida, you can memo to the hurricane in Haiti um, or the earthquake in Haiti. So if you wanna give you know, something like that, the, the Free Methodist Church, they did good stuff with that money. You can trust them that what you memo it to will go to. So, and you'll see that underneath there, here and there once in a while. Um, and then also, this hasn't taken place or anything, but I've been in contact with a, the Lutheran Evangelical Church in the D.C. area about um, in, inquiring about how we can come alongside an Afghan refugee. And I'm finding out more about that. You know, it might be we help them set up an apartment. I forget what that term is when you flood them with food and stuff. I forget the term. And love. Or, huh? Love. Yeah, love. And, uh, <laughs> And maybe we can adopt a family for Christmas time. You know, just think of coming from that frightening yeah. experience to somewhere where you can't even speak English. Yeah. So the church needs to be there, yeah. um, the body of Christ. So that's all I got. And uh, Angie, you're up. I'm excited. Because today we get to 
be and spend time with our most precious members of the congregation, our children. So, we're, you know, we're all going to wear masks, and except if you're in the nursery, all staff will be wearing masks. We're also going to go down, and we are going to do temperature checks every week, and um, just to try to slow the spread, right? So, but, um, so parents, you are welcome to bring your children down, or they can just walk down with us. But if it's their first time, we ask that you bring them down. And then after the service, it's really important that parents come and pick up their children. <laughs> <laughs> we love them, but we want to lovingly get them back to you. So the question might be, what do we do if a child tests or someone tests positive for COVID? So we want you to know that we're thinking about all these things, and this is the plan. We ask that you notify uh, myself or um, Pastor Rich or the church office as soon as you know that there's a positive test. And then we will notify. That's why we do the, the attendance every week and all of that. And we will um, notify and we will close Sunday school for the next Sunday just to give that 10, 10 day kind of window. But I'm believing that that's not going to happen, right? So, um, so we can be thankful for that. We are just so glad. We are just so, so glad to be able to spend time. Because we know what is our what is our statement? Love God, love people, be disciples, and make disciples, including children. So let's just go to the Lord this morning. Oh, Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. We thank you that you care for us. You know how many hairs are on our head. You know our thoughts from afar. We thank you for that. We thank you that we can come into your presence where there is fullness of joy because of Jesus. We thank you that you tell us to come boldly and confidently to your throne to receive mercy and grace to help in a time of need. Lord, we need you. We desperately need you. Individually, God, we need you. You said all who are thirsty, come and drink. Lord, we're thirsty this morning. We are hungry this morning. And we thank you that we come to you, to the one who has everlasting water. We thank you. I thank you, Lord, you said that there is no fear in love. Your perfect love drives out all fear. And this morning, Lord, we live in a society and we ourselves, our thoughts, move towards worry and anxiety, especially as COVID keeps going on and on and on. But Lord, we choose to trust you. We look to you and we thank you that you say, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your soul, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This morning, Lord, there's so many burdens that we're carrying and we want to stop this morning and we want to cast our burdens on you, knowing that you will sustain us. Your word says you will never allow the righteous to be moved. David says, for me, I shall call upon God, and the Lord shall sustain me. Evening and morning and afternoon will I pray and cry aloud, and you will hear our voice. So we cry aloud to you, Lord. We cry aloud to you. Lord, there's a long list of people who need a healing touch. Lord, we cry out to you. For healing, you 
Lord Jehovah Rapha. We cry out to you. You are the comforter. You are Jehovah Shalom, our peace. And there are those of us who need comfort, Lord, because we've lost loved ones or we're in a really difficult situation. And we thank you that we are not alone, for you say, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. We thank you for that. Lord, we live in a world that is so troubled. But we thank you that your plan and purpose prevails. You are King of kings and Lord of lords. You are redeeming for yourself a people from every tongue and tribe and nation. We thank you for that. Father, and we thank you for your love for the Afghan people. Father, we thank you for that. And we ask that you would use this time to bring many, many into the kingdom. Father, we remember our brothers and sisters who are suffering greatly at this time. Lord, many have been murdered, even in the last few weeks. Lord, we thank you that they are with you. But we pray, Father, we pray for the church. We pray that fear would not grip them there. Father, we pray that you would deliver them. We pray that you would protect them. Father, we ask that you would give them grace to forgive even those that persecute them. And we ask you, God, as you did with Saul of Tarsus on the road to Damascus, we ask that you would intervene and you would work in the hearts and minds of the Taliban and reveal yourself to them. Nothing is impossible with you. Father, and as a country, we are struggling too. We think of 9-11 yesterday, 20 years, Father. You know, Lord, that there's comfort needed, Father. There's For those that have lost loved ones, even the 13 um, officers, the 13 in the military that we lost in Americans, Father. You know that there's worry as there's those who are still there that want to come home. Father, we can't solve it, but you can, and we bring it to you. But we pray, Father, for our nation at this time, that we would come together. Most importantly, Lord, that we would humble ourselves before you, God. For you said, if my people, called by my name, would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, you would hear from heaven, you would forgive our sin, and you would heal our land. Let's do the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So I'm going to ask our children at this time to stand. And when I get to the back, we will walk out and jump together. I, uh, I was walking in. Am I on, Kate? Katie, is it on? Is it? Is it on now? Yeah. It's me. Um, yeah, John Siri asked me this morning when he saw me, he said, do you think you forgot how to speak? <laughs> so far, I'm not doing too well, John. <laughs> Can't even figure out the microphone. But uh, I want to read to you, uh, I'm not going to read to you John 11, but yeah, you know what, I'm going to read to you. I'm going to read to you John 11, 
And uh, then I'm going to read you Hebrews 9, which we're really not going to look at, but it's implied throughout the, the, what I'm going to speak about this morning. John 11, if we can hit that, Katie, or, or Leanne. Leanne's got it. It says this, and this is Jesus, Lazarus, Martha, and Mary. Okay? It's a story you probably all know. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now, Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard which, that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you would have been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The, anyone who believes in me will live, even though they die. And whoever lives by believing me will never die. And he closes in on her, and he says, do you believe this? Yeah. Hebrews 9. For Christ did not enter a sanctuary made with human hands, that was only a copy of the true one. He entered in heaven itself, now to appear for us in God's presence. Nor did he enter heaven to offer himself again and again and again the way the high priest enters the most holy place every year with blood that is not his own. Important. Otherwise, Christ would have had to suffer many times since the creation of the world. But he has appeared once for all that the accumulation of the ages to do away with sin by the sacrifice of himself. Just as people are destined to die once, and then for that to face God's judgment. So Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many, and he will appear a second time, not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. So basically what I read to you is God's love story of mercy and grace um, that starts in the Old Testament in Genesis, and it's moving um, the Messiah's moving to the cross, and that's like a real big picture of the history of God for us. So one of the things, uh, as I, I stand here before you this morning, is um, one of the things I love on second Sundays in September is the National Football League. It's a beautiful thing. And um, it starts today, mostly at 1 o'clock. And they'll, they'll kick off and they'll run down the field and cash their million dollar checks later during the week. And one of the things I like about new seasons is that in the new seasons, it doesn't matter what your record was last year. It doesn't matter what your failures were the last year on the field. But as soon as that ball is kicked off, it is, it is a new season. Your win and loss record doesn't matter. It's a new season. We start all over again. Those players start all over again. And in Christ, you start all over again. The power of God through forgiveness of sin. And, and uh, to me, like this new season is kind of like kicking off a new season with Jesus Christ. I mean, it, it, we, we think about it, we can think about our hearts and mind, and, and you're starting anew. And this morning, I'm going to move you around a little. I have a couple things I want to say from being away, but then we're going to really hit the, 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 the text that I read earlier. And this morning, you know, it's like we come together. We come together in Christ. That is our, our focus. We come together in Christ. And in essence, the believers who have been redeemed, redeemed as a believer, is we, we, we come and the slate is wiped clean. And, and we come together in Christ. And we come together in a new life of forgiveness and a new perspective of life. And, and we do that because we're human beings. We're frail, right? We mess up, right? We come together not just in the brokenness of the world. We come together in our very own brokenness, our very own um, sins, and our very own struggles, our very own disappointments, our very own, ah, oh God. We come together, and we are broken people. We are frail. We are fragile. And we come together, even in our difficulties, even in the messes, in a complicated world, and, and we look out and, and, and we say, well, life is really messy. 
and God's grace is messy. Yeah. Amen. And he comes in in the middle of our mess and he displays grace and love. Life's messy. We come together, right? And, you know, like, you know, we're like a team, right? Team Jesus, redeemed. The cover of the jersey, I don't care. It's the redeemed of the heart. We come together as a team, right? And, 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 and I know the church, there's formality in church. And there's routine. And sometimes like, oh, we sang these songs last week. Or we did this and oh, this and that. But there's something about the formality of the bride of Christ. There's the glimpses of change, life. There's the glimpses of salvation. There's the glimpses of new perspectives in the God's kingdom. There's, there's, there's glimpses of God changed me here and there. There's glimpses of I don't get what's going on, but I will walk with Christ. And it doesn't make sense, but I will walk. That's, that, that, that's Christianity. God is not always coming in and fixing. I'm not saying he doesn't fix. But he comes in and he walks with us. He's living. He walks with us. We come together in the formality of church and, and, and in song and a variety of things, we hunger and thirst for God together. Yeah. Like that song we sang, it was real fast. I was really getting into that. Na, 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 na. But, but I was watching the words too. Yeah. It was a thirst for truth. Yeah. We come together in the church and we are part of God's bride. We thirst. We have been found. We didn't have a relationship with Christ at once, and now we do. Not because we're great, because God is good, and God is merciful, and God came in the midst of our mess. So let me change things real quick here. This summer, I had this sabbatical. And um, I did a lot of things, but not really. I, I read nine and a half books. The other half of one book is really hard to read because you have to really think when you read it. It's a book by Tim Keller, Pain and Suffering. Uh, I'm like, he's really smart. And, you know, I'm like reading it really slow to get it. Um, I, I started playing ice hockey and I realized, again, the doctor said, cool. And I realized how old and slow I really am. But I keep going back. And I, I actually took a step back. And just kind of, I don't know, debriefed in my brain. And like the whole time, like I didn't come in here and suit up like you when you were here, but I was still part of the team because the redeemed team is, yes, it's the local church, but it's the universal church as in those who are redeemed. So we are a team. And, 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 and we come together, and, and here's some good things about the church. And I, I say this all the time. Someone said this to me, and I said, you know, like, like the church, I mean, I think you know me by now, the church did not die because the bald head guy wasn't here. <laughs> Don't get caught up in, in the person. Get caught up in the person of Jesus Christ. The, the church moved. The church, people took on roles they weren't taking on. They said, oh, wait, this is needed, and this is needed, and I didn't do this, but I will step up to this. And it's one body in many parts. That's the church of Christ. Amen. Even in a pandemic, even when we still come together and some can't be here uh, for medical reasons, and we use video, and we do this and that, and we use Zoom, and we, and we, we give it our best. One body, many parts. So, so here's, here's the deal. We will, today and into the future, as a church, do our best of our ability with God's help to encourage you, collectively and individually, to march down the field of life with God. We will cheer for you. even within the bumps and bruises you will carry in that field. We will cheer for you that you would put your trust in Christ. Yeah. Not even the first time, but an ongoing, I will trust God. Mm -hmm. The cross before me, the world behind me. So I, I, I observed a lot of things this summer in a different way. And um, so one of the things I, I came across is I don't understand a lot in life, anyone? I don't understand someone. Do you understand everything in life? 
I mean, like, I, I just don't understand things. And I was, I was reading this thing, and I saw this guy at Harvard University. Um, the, all the chaplains at Harvard University voted in the head chaplain, and he's an atheist. Uh, how do you be a chaplain if you, if you don't believe in God? But that's who they voted in. And um, so, so basically, I was reading that, and I'm like, I don't get that. And um, so the, basically, your good is your salvation according to your own ways. It really doesn't have to be God. In fact, God is kind of out there. Even, that's more agnostic, but really God doesn't even exist. So I don't understand that. I don't understand why Haiti got whacked. And again, in a hurricane, let alone the famine, the disease, and suffering. And we've told you over the years, eating mud cookies to fill your stomach. God, don't understand that. I don't understand a lot of things. I don't understand COVID and mutations. I think I got a solid C in biology. And I don't get, like, offset that. Joey Embiid, Owen Bede, he's a pro basketball player. With all these things going on in life, he just signed a $200 million contract. So I'm like, well, I don't get that guy. Well, how does that work? So there's a lot of things I don't get at all. In uh, Hurricane Ida, I watched people. I, I've been through two hurricanes, but it was nothing really, just small loss of things. Where people, they would get to their home, their home wasn't there. I don't get those things. And then Angie mentioned the people that are afraid of their life in Afghanistan, maybe you didn't get out. I don't get that. I don't understand that. I'm not in those situations. And then this summer, one of the things that I don't get all the time, oh, I know it's in the Bible, and I know it's going to happen to me someday, is I don't get when people die, especially when they're under 60. It keeps getting higher the older I get. <laughs> Used to be. <laughs> so, I don't understand when people die. I often say, God, why? Why did that person die? I asked the question, and, and you know, I want to. The, the guy named um, Job. <laughs> he went through a lot of trouble and suffering, tested of his faith, the whole story here. And in chapter fourteen of Job, um, he. he he, he realizes how frail humanity is. Everything is gone from him, right? And, and, and he gets to this point, I think. Job gets to this point and he goes, life is really short. I didn't expect this. And, and, he's, and he's struggling with this. And in verse 5 or uh, 14, Job gets a glimpse, if you read the passage, into Jesus or the Lord being resurrected. Or resurrected. Later in the chapter, he, he says this, Job, my Redeemer lives. It gave him perspective. But what Job was saying in 14 is this. I'm going to die someday. Now you're probably going, why am I back here with this guy? And you start off with tell me I'm going to die. Because you're going to die. We're going to die someday. And in the guts of the gospel, Jesus came to take us from that death to live with him. You will die, but you will live with Christ. It actually says in Job 14, God knows the day you will die. This August, a friend of uh, Jen and ours, Jen and mine, Bill Hills died. It was horrible. He's 52 years old. He had cancer. He was a funny guy. I lost contact, sort of, but not really. You know, you kind of know what he's up to through other people and vice versa. He was really funny. He made me laugh all the time. He was a generous person. He made us dinner numerous times. He made spare ribs that I drive 80 miles for. <laughs> they were so good. He gave Jen, uh, he bought her, or gave her her first power tool of sorts. He was so generous. When you get ready for a hurricane in Florida, some people didn't have the shutters. We had the big plywood. And there would Bill. He'd show up in your house. You need help? Oh, I can't even hold a screwdriver. Of course I need help. <laughs> and Bill would put the plywood on, you know, when the hurricanes are coming. He was so generous. We tried to get in a conversation with him, maybe Facebook, or not Facebook, Zoom or something, with Jen was talking to his wife, Mary but it never panned out. 
And then the night before he died, someone we know said he was gasping for air that night. He died. 52 years old. I love what it said in his obituary. I assume his wife wrote. It says this, but Bill loved God. Bill loved God. Bill loved God. Boy, it stinks. But by faith, when he took his last breath, he was in the presence of Jesus Christ. Amen. I have to believe that by faith in Jesus. It's the core and the guts of the resurrection and the power over sin and death. He is now in the presence of God, not gasping for breath. When the rubber hits the road, Jesus is all we got. Life is short. Life is short. He is in the presence of God. And I know, and I talk about this a lot, and I don't want to look more at the salvation end. I know that I talk about this, and it's biblical, and that's why when you come to Christ and you give your life to Christ, the Holy Spirit comes into you. God gets the spirit in you that you can live out the kingdom. And yeah, man, we need to be living out the kingdom. And there's that birth date that God knows, and that end date that God knows, and there's that, you know, that expression, the dash in the middle. We, 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 we got to be living the kingdom. We got to be generous and being about the kingdom and loving people and, and telling people about Christ. That's the kingdom mentality. God puts that in. But I want to look more at the end that we're going to die. And the guts of the gospel is that Jesus came to save us from ourselves. It's not an opinion. It's not an opinion. Like, well, I don't agree with God, and you can disagree with God, but it's not an opinion. That's what God says. I have come to seek and save the lost. And we can't go to the appeal process. You know, like when you, when you play baseball, uh, how many of you actually play baseball or anything? Yeah, I played last night. Um, but, you know, like, uh, let me show you, illustrate this. Like a batter will go like this and the wrist will move. And the catcher or uh, the umpire behind the home plate might say, well, I'm not sure if it's a strike or not. And, the, and the, the batter will say, I want an appeal to the first base coach, the first base ump or the third base. And they'll either say strike or no. And that's an appeal. It's like in a court, maybe you don't agree with something. Then you, you take it to a higher level of appeal in the court. Out of Jesus' love and mercy, to save us, that we will die physically, but we don't die. Jesus is the final judge. There's no appeal. And even the fact that there is a way is God's grace and love and mercy. Here's the thing this morning, that, that and, and I know sometimes, well, that's not fair, God. What about this person and that person? And I can't, I'm not God, you know? But it was unfair that one without sin died for sin. Here's the thing this morning, wherever you're at, God is in love with you. It's the core guts of the gospel. And, and um, Jesus says a lot of things in, a, in, in ways about death. He, he, he says, you will die, but you will live. You will die physically, but you will live. It, 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 listen to this. If you want to follow me, you're going to die in your selfish ways. And when you die in your selfish ways, then you will live. Paul says, for me to die is gain. And then in John 11, which I read earlier, I am the resurrection of life. Anyone who believes in me will never die. Even when they die physically, they live. You are made for eternity. He says to Martha then, do you believe I am the resurrection of life? Even though you die, you will live. It's the essence and deepest parts of the gospel that Jesus came for us and he came to do what only he could do. Hope. 
There's more to life than our situations, and our situations stink sometimes, right? They stink. They're horrible. That we can walk in grief and walk still in a peace and hope that God gives us. God is not this deistic God that winds up creation and sits back, but he is personal. He's the whispers in your heart, the whispers in your ear. That's God. So the story I, I read to you earlier is uh, Mary and Martha, Lazarus, and Jesus, right? You know the story, right? And um, it's a familiar story. And Jesus, Lazarus just died. In fact, he died like a couple days ago, and Martha's like waiting for Jesus. She knows he's around, and Mary's hanging back, and I'm not concerned about who's busy and who's not busy with Mary and Martha, and, and all this stuff. And it says in some passages that Jesus is two miles away or four miles away. I'm going to say he's an Aspen Hill giant, and this is where Lazarus died. And, and Martha is like grieving, right? We see later in the passage that Jesus wept. Jesus is grieving. Mary's grieving. People around are grieving. Their friend Lazarus had died. And Martha sees Jesus coming up a few days later. She was kind of waiting for him. And um, she, she, she was like, you know, in essence, do you know my brother's dead? If you were here, this would have happened. We say those things to God sometimes, right? If, if you would intervene, if you were there, if you understood, if you loved me, then this would not have happened. Martha, you were an Aspen Hill giant. You could have called Kevin up and given you a ride to church to catch up to Lazarus. But no. Where have you been? And since you're God, why weren't you here? Only if you would have been here, my brother, in essence, would not have died. Only if you were here, you fill in the blank, then blah, 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 blah. Right? right? We all have those. And then Jesus gets in this uh, theological discussion with Martha. I know he will rise again. And then I'm just going to throw this in. You know this, but Lazarus is raised from the dead that shows the power of God to the people. And, and, and Martha goes, yeah, yeah, I know that rise against stuff. I believe that stuff. You know, you know, I understand. Even though you die physically, you will live. But Jesus was trying to hint more that he's going to show her. I am the resurrection and life. And even though you die, you will live. Because you have been redeemed by my love and mercy. And he says that to all of us today in the core guts of the gospel. Do you believe this? But the cool thing about Jesus in faith is this, even though it's hard. Our sickness is not the end. Our situation is not the end. Our disappointment is not the end. Though it feels like the end, doesn't it? Come on. I'm not the only one, right? It feels it. About eight years ago, and I could be wrong on this, Doug Cross, many of you know him, is the pastor at Alexandria. His wife, Barbara, died eight years ago. And um, they had a service, and it was somewhere in Virginia, if I remember correctly. And uh, they drove to the cemetery, and there was maybe 30 or 40 people there. And they layered his wife of many years, 30 years, I think, in the coffin into the ground. And I remember this. I've never forgotten it. As they lowered her body, I think, Leanne, you were there, I think. Maybe Will and Liz are there. They started singing because he lives. Yeah. Yeah. I can face tomorrow yeah. because he lives. Yeah. Fear is gone. Because I know who holds the future yeah. and life is worth the living because he lives. Mm -hmm. God sent his son. He came to heal and forgive. He lived and died to buy our pardon. An empty grave is there to prove he lives. Yeah. It doesn't mean that Doug ran out and said, yippee, just buried his wife. 
but God put in a perspective and spirit that Barbara's alive. A new perspective in life. A prisoner murdered another man. And he was in prison and he really wanted to be forgiven by the parents of the child who he murdered. And finally they set up the time and he went in and there's the parents and they were angry, right? You know? And then he, and he wouldn't look at them. Had his head down the whole time. And the mother and the father said, why? Why do you want this meeting? He said, I want you to forgive me. They said, well, why did you kill him? And he told them why. And I remember, you know, the mother looks at him and said, that's unforgivable. No. And he kept his head down and if I remember correctly, made his way out of the room as fast as possible. He wanted to be forgiven. And um, as we come to communion today, God puts in us that God is truth, God is grace, God is love, the need for forgiveness to be right with Jesus, God through Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. let, let me tell you this this morning. There is nothing that you cannot be forgiven right. in Jesus Christ. Right. Amen. Nothing. This morning as we take communion. Ebenezer, you got me, right? Come on up. Thank you. This morning as we take communion together, it may be a time where you have been walking through the Christian life, right? And you, you just want to kind of recommit your life to Christ. Maybe it's a time where you want to come and talk to someone and say, you know, I don't even understand this Jesus stuff. What does it mean to be forgiven? I want to be forgiven. By God, not by us. Yeah. Come on. And the one thing about coming to communion is this. That God, through Christ, <clears throat> forgives. And on the night when Jesus was with his disciples before he went to the cross, he said, this body this bread represents my body it will be broken for you, Rich, because of your sins. Your sins. And every time you take the bread, you remember what Christ did for you. That you will be free. You will physically die, but you will be free. You can be free today. Take the bread. So blessed the cup and he told his disciples that this is the blood sign of my covenant let's drink together and in Hebrews 9 it says this it is not someone else's blood but it is Christ's blood that saves us Amazing grace. 